Good morning. Today I want to talk about what is quite possibly the biggest mistake I've ever made in my life. Without a doubt, the biggest mistake I've ever made in my life. And I want to kind of go through how I made a sequence of poor decisions that eventually led to me stripping myself of all the passion and fulfillment. Not all, but most that I had had uh, that I had in my life, and that I had spent my whole life leading up to it working towards. Um, now, this isn't some crazy story. I didn't do anything nuts. All I really did was uh, quit something that I loved more than anything else. And for the last five years, until I picked it back up, there's been a void in my life that has driven me to be less motivated, um, less fulfilled, and just quite frankly less happy than I ever have been before. And until I picked it back up, I hadn't really realized the ginormous effect that it had on my life of stripping myself of the things that I was passionate about. Um, so I'll start from the beginning. Um, when I was eight years old, I uh, actually that's wrong. <laughs> when I was seven years old, I wanted to play baseball. Um, I played t-ball and I'd taken a couple years off to play soccer. And I returned when I was seven years old. Um, and the first season, I sucked. Um, I got two hits the whole year. I got a triple down the right field line. I remember that. It was against the Yankees. And then I got a, uh, a single up the middle that the center fielder missed. So I got to second base. Not a double, technically. We'll call it a single. Um, but those are the two hits I got in the entire season. And I spent most of the time on the bench. I was... Like I said, I was not a good player, um, but I loved playing. It was my favorite thing that I'd pretty much done at that point. I had so much fun being out there, um, and I just loved the game itself. So when I was eight, I uh, I had started things off in the same sort of pattern where, you know, I wasn't doing much to the plate, wasn't getting much playing time, and I figured, well, you know, if I'm not doing well and I'm not getting the playing time that I feel like I, you know, could be getting... I got to I got to put in some work. Um and so my backyard at my dad's house when I was younger, the way it was set up was there was a uh kind of like a two and a half foot wall um of uh railroad ties. They're like wooden big logs that are squared off. And uh they made like a little retaining wall for some trees that were up by the fence and all that. And then there was a patch of grass about, you know, 50 feet or so like past that or before that retaining wall. So um, when I was eight years old, every single day, um, for hours and hours a day, I'd go out there and I would just throw a baseball at that retaining wall and it would bounce right back to me. There was a little like lip in it where if you hit it, it would come back like a line drive. And that was like right at like knee to waist height, like the strike zone, you could say, um, for that age. And so I would just go and I would, I would practice pitching I would practice fielding and I would just throw the ball at the wall for several hours a day. And I mean, every single day I was obsessed. It was my favorite thing to do. I didn't have much else to do. I was only allowed to play video games for an hour a day. So when I would go outside, I go right in the backyard with my glove and a baseball and I would just throw. Um, and so uh, my dad, eventually he got me a, uh, a pitch back which is like, you know, this like net that you can throw a baseball into. If you hit it pretty much anywhere in the net, it should come right back to you. Um, and that was just a blast. And so I used that thing and I started to practice hitting. Um, I thought that lefties were like the coolest thing in the world. I, I'm right-handed. Um, but I thought that left-handed swings, left-handed throws, they looked just so cool. So I started to uh, learn how to throw and hit lefty. Um, and, you know, it gave me an excuse to be out there for longer. And I never ran out of things to do. I'd have games against myself, lefty versus righty. Um, and I would simulate, you know, oh, bottom of the ninth, two outs, bases loaded type shit, you know, uh, like any little baseball player does. And so that's pretty much... Uh, how things persisted 
throughout my entire life. And I'm not even joking when I say that. When I was 17 years old, I was still in the backyard throwing a baseball at the railroad ties. And I would go out in the front yard. At this point, I had whiff balls and a whiff ball bat, and I would spend hours a day doing lefty versus righty, having simulated games against myself, just hitting the ball, practicing my swing, filming it, doing everything you can. Um, and not because I wanted necessarily to play, excuse me, not because I was like, I need to get to this level or anything like that. I just loved the game so much and I wanted to do everything I could to be getting better at it and to be able to play it as long as possible. Um, now, when I got to high school, I'll spare the details, but I had an experience that of which I've come to know is quite common with a lot of high school baseball players where they had a coach, maybe they didn't get along with the coach, maybe they didn't see eye to eye with the coach, and that coach made baseball, in the simplest way I can put it, made it no fun. Now, obviously, I was not just playing baseball at my high school, I was doing all these things on my own. I had played on travel teams throughout that time, and I played senior leagues for the, like, you know, the little league, but when you get older, it's called senior leagues. And I did all that stuff um, as often as possible, and I got as much time on the field as I possibly could. Now, at this point, um, just to kind of set the stage, I was, I was a shortstop, and I had been pulled up to varsity my sophomore year. Um, the coach took a chance on me. He believed in me, I thought. Um, and, well, things quickly went downhill. Uh, by the time that I was a senior, I there was no chance I was ever going to see shortstop again, which that's, you know, that's his choice. Um, I wasn't happy about that. However, what I really truly wasn't happy about was the the lack of true practice that we had. Um, he was a big CrossFit guy, and so most of our practice seemed to be spent on the track or on the blacktop or down the line doing some sort of conditioning, um, which conditioning is important in any sport, but when your team is batting less than 200 and you're making five, six, seven errors in a game, um, and not just batting 200, I mean like there's 21 outs in a seven inning game, we'd be having 15 strikeouts consistently. Um, no one's even getting on base. No one's even putting the ball in play. Um, just horrible, year in, year out. Meanwhile, our JV program, almost every single year, they were uh, never the first team. There was a private uh, Christian school um, that like always was number one, but we were always number two. I didn't play JV, but the team that I would have played with they came in second with like a 15 and three record or something like that. Um, they did great. And that was the case every single year. But then we'd go up to varsity or they would go up to varsity and we just get clobbered um, by all the same teams, same kids. It's just that their programs developed them as players, but more importantly, their coaches believed in them. Um, and now I won't get too much into details, but all I'll say is that we didn't practice appropriately and our coach instilled zero confidence in us as players. And as someone who loved baseball more than anything, it was extremely infuriating to deal with this for three years straight. Because I just wanted us to be able to go out there and have fun, play good baseball, and get some good practice in. And that never happened. Um, I try and give suggestions, you know, like, hey, you know, it'd be cool if we get some more grounders. Like, we're making a lot of errors. Could we get some more grounders? And I'd be met with, well, you're not the coach. When you're the coach, you can make the rules. And I try to be respectful about it, especially at first. But after three years being on that team, it just became impossible to deal with it civil, civilly. Um, and so even though I was, uh, I would say, on pace to play college baseball, um, I had been playing in uh, invitational tournaments for uh, Baseball Factory through Under Armour. A couple of the guys that I was on a team with um, at this invitational tournament, uh, well, actually, I believe nine of the 13 guys went on to play D1 college baseball on scholarship. 
Um, I watched a couple of them this past year in the College World Series, tearing it up on ESPN. And one of the players at one of the events I was at, um, he wasn't on my team, but of the pool of selected players, was uh, Nolan Gorman. You can look up his baseball factory stats if you want, and you can see uh, we were at the same event. Um, the 2017 uh, National something. I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. I could pull it up if I wanted to. It's been about six years. So essentially, I was playing with these guys that were poised for D1 college baseball, and I was competing. Um, and I, you know, I loved it <laughs> as much as anybody else. Like, I just, I loved being able to play baseball and pushing it and being able to compete at a high level. It was like, it meant everything to me. And I truly spent every single second either playing baseball, practicing baseball in my backyard, and when I came in from being in the backyard, I would turn on MLB Network, I'd catch up on the day's baseball activities and news, watch the breakdowns, and in the meantime, I'd be on my phone on Baseball Reference, looking up player stats from, you know, <laughs> the entire history of baseball. I've probably seen 10,000 Baseball Reference pages in my life. At least 5,000. 10,000 is a lot. But that was all that I did for 10 consecutive years. And I had, I'd like to think I had the skills to back it up. Um, I was a shortstop, as I'd mentioned. Uh, I was able to throw 85 plus miles an hour across the diamond um, when I was 16. I was a switch hitter. Um, my exit velocity off the tee was 95 miles an hour from both sides. Um, I had the raw skills, I guess you could say, but that's not what this video is about. Um, and I'm getting way off topic here. Point being, I had every intention to go and play college baseball. And although I was poised for that, after three years of being in such a disgustingly toxic environment on my high school team, I just couldn't be respectful anymore. Um, I would start to really, really get angry with the fact that, you know, like, hey, you know, we're batting 150 as a team. Why aren't we taking batting practice? Why are we only getting eight swings each uh, twice per week? We wouldn't do batting practice every day, but when we did, it was eight swings each, and half of them are situational swings, like get the runner over, get the runner in, drive to opposite field. And, like, all of that's important, if you're batting 150 as a team and you never have base runners to be getting over or getting in, that small ball shit doesn't matter, <laughs> um, quite frankly. So I would just start to bring up these points more aggressively, like, hey, we need to be hitting. We need to, we need to be taking hitting practice. We need to be taking grounders. We need to be doing more inner squats. We can see live pitching. We need to get the pitching machine out at the very least so we can just get some sort of like game simulated at bats. We need it. And just, you know... When you're the coach, you do it or whatever. And so um, as my senior year came to a close, I, uh, I did the biggest mistake I've ever done in my life, which at the time felt like the greatest victory of all time. But on behalf of the hundred or so players who'd been through his program, who'd had their love for baseball destroyed, I took it upon myself to go and say, hey, you know what, man? You truly are a stain on baseball as a coach. You shouldn't be coaching kids. You don't realize the enormous impact you have on kids like myself. And you know, and you don't you don't realize that if you take something that kids love and you turn it into something they hate, that's not just a, a matter of, oh, okay, well now I don't play baseball anymore. It's like, well, hey, like, this thing that you loved for a decade, it doesn't matter to me. You know, and that's kind of the sentiment that we all got. So that's that's what I told him is like, hey, you know, you make it very clear that you don't give a shit about the players and it's just not okay. Um, now, obviously, I wasn't that diplomatic about it. <laughs> I, I said a lot and I got very, very angry and I, I, I took him outside. It was after our banquet and I took him outside and then I cussed him out for about 15 minutes, just laying into him about all these things that I mentioned Um but I was very animated. Now, at the time, 
you know, and I had like some of my teammates were like peeking around the corner, like of the MP room, and they were like, "Holy shit, <laughs> like he's really doing it," and it felt so good in the moment, and I, I was proud that I stood up for myself, that I stood up for my teammates, the whole program, and hopefully made an impact on how he would treat things heading forward. Uh, I don't think I did now. And thinking back on it, although that was extremely satisfying, um, I'm just so embarrassed that I let one person determine the way that I treated 10 years of dedicating my life to something. Um, maybe he made it a, a, you know, a horrible experience, but at the end of the day, I'm the one who was in control of deciding what I was going to do. And so um, right before I quit, this is kind of important as well to note, to note, but I'd gotten accepted into UC Santa Barbara, which was a school that I had never thought I'd be accepted to. It was a dream school of mine. And it was a huge long shot. I have a video about this as well. It was like a, like less than a 1% chance I'd make it. My GPA was a 3.1 weighted, which was a whole GPA point below the class average. Um, I didn't have an impressive SAT score or anything like that either. I, I believe that I got in for my essay, but that's all not really important for this video. So I'll skip past that. Basically, I'd gotten accepted into a school I never thought I would be. And they had a D1 baseball program. Um, and I just kind of figured, well, I'm never going to make it trying to walk on to a D1 baseball program. It's not even worth my time. And if I'm getting into a school like this, I may as well focus my efforts on my major, which was pre-financial mathematics and statistics. And I thought, well, I'm just going to have to move on from baseball. This is where I hang up the spikes. And I quit. I completely quit, dropped everything. And I was not, you know, in love with baseball as I had been. I stopped watching it on TV. I stopped keeping up with all the happenings and the pros. I still looked at baseball reference stats. Um, but for the most part, I completely stopped caring about baseball. And I, uh, I persisted with that for five years. So in the last two months, it all started. I saw an ad on Facebook for the local men's league. Um, at the time, I was, 200 and pa I was 200 pounds. I hadn't played in five years. I figured, well, hey, you know, I'm about as far removed from my playing days as I possibly could be physically and mentally. Let's just give it a shot and go out there and have a casual fun time. Now, this only two months later, I'm down 34 pounds from that. Um, I'm in pretty much the best shape I've been in since high school. I've been having so much fun and I've been feeling so good about just getting out in the field I don't even give a shit about the competition. I don't even give a shit where I'm, I don't give a shit about anything other than the fact that I'm out there playing and it's literally changed my life. I've applied myself in more ways than I could have imagined in every aspect of my life, not just in baseball, but I'm taking care of myself. I'm taking care of the people around me. I'm checking in with people I haven't talked with in years. I'm getting myself on a routine so I can be consistent and reliable for the people in my life that I love. I'm taking care of things around the house like I never did before. Um, it's pretty much saved my life, getting back on the field. Even though it's just a casual Sunday league, um, it's changed everything about my life. And in the fall, I'll be attempting to walk on at my local community college um, so I have about four months to prepare, maybe three and a half, four months to keep building up my skills, but I'm going to be trying to go and uh, try out for my local baseball team. I also, in addition to that, have re-enrolled in college classes. You kind of have to, to play at the JUCO level, but regardless, I want the challenge and I want to be able to apply myself in an academic setting again. Um, I've been having, a, I've been running a small business for three years now, so I haven't been in school in those, those past years. I never finished college. I never finished UCSB. Um, but this will be my first time back in a classroom in uh, almost four years. 
and I'm so excited, and I have everything, uh, and I, I can attribute everything to getting back on the baseball field. So I kind of got way off topic with what I wanted this video to be about, but essentially I wanted to kind of mention or, or discuss the fact that quitting my passion and, and tr baseball truly was my passion. I mean, it's still, it still really is. I've never felt more comfortable or confident than on a baseball field as I have in any setting in the rest of my life thereafter or before. Um, baseball, it is, it is truly my passion. It provided me with more fulfillment than I ever could have appreciated or known while I did it. And I guess the whole point of me making this video is kind of just to say that if there's anything that you feel passionately about or have felt passionately about in the past, and maybe you let somebody ruin that for you, or you let yourself ruin it, it is never too late to pick it back up again. And even if you do so in the smallest capacity possible, it could change your life in two months. It could change your life in two weeks, honestly. Um, and I'm just so happy that I decided to pick up the spikes again. And I feel like I have a duty to implore, you know, the eight subscribers on this channel, <laughs> I have a duty to implore you to try and pick up the spikes in your own right again and get back doing what you love for as much time as you possibly can. Because a life where you're not doing what you love is not a life where you will be able to be as happy as you can be. And life is not all about being happy. That's that's fantasy, but if you can spend as much time as you possibly can doing the things that provide you with joy and fulfillment, then you will feel marginally better than you would otherwise. And so, although I feel like I wasted five years not playing baseball, and although those were a rough five years to be real with you guys, um, the last two months of playing again has made up for that last five years. And I've had more fun in the last two months than I've had in half a decade. And it all started with just the smallest little bit of motivation. So, uh, yeah, that's about all I got um, for today. This isn't really the same sort of video that I usually make, but this one is personal to me, and I just hope that I can have a little bit of inspiration on some of you to maybe go out there and do things that you love as much as you possibly can. And if there's something that you gave up on or something that you haven't, haven't done in a long time that used to provide you with an immense amount of joy, you got to get out there and do it in whatever way you can. It'll save your life. And if you don't know what that thing is for you, then spend some time thinking and asking yourself, what is the most fun that I've ever had? What have I enjoyed more than anything else in my life? And if you can find an answer for that or several, then that's a good start. So thanks for watching. And I uh, wish me luck, man. And I wish you all the best of luck as well. So thanks for listening to me ramble. And uh, thanks for the love. Take care, everyone. Peace.